when you think about yourself as a black Dominican woman, um, what does that like bring up for you? Whew. It, it it makes me think of like what I missed out on culturally because mm-hmm. I was raised here in the US and I didn't spend too much time in DR. Um, I wish I did. But I, from the friends that I speak with that they grow up in DR, it's like, it's harder for women in DR, women of color to, you know, pop out in their careers or pop out in general. It's very t- traditional over there, but I still feel those effects over here in the U.S. Like I still feel that invisibility. I, I always get curious about the difference and the, the, the impact and like how we can do better and not just over there, but over here. <laughs> My name is Leo Mary Rodriguez. Um, I'm Bronx-based documentary cinematographer uh, and photographer. I'm also a program director at a film festival called Nifty, the National Film Festival for Talented Youth, based in Seattle. So those are that's me. It's a little bit about me. This is Neo, my dog. As, as soon as I start talking, he want to get in on it. Um, and yeah, that's a bit about me. Wonderful. So you are clearly, clearly in the film situation and art form and all of that. When did you kind of like come into realizing this is something that you have a passion for? Oh, way back, way back in the day. I initially wanted to be an actor and I still do, but I would go to auditions and I would never get casted for anything. And I got a, a call back from somebody saying, you're not ready to, to be in Hollywood or something like that to that effect. And I was like, oh, ouch. And I took it personal. You know, I was little, I was young. And then I had a English teacher who was also a filmmaker in high school. He went to school for film and English. So he was my English teacher. And we had like a film club and I was like, I like this behind the scenes stuff better. Like the people are cooler here. The people are <laughs> cool in this environment. They get to turn off the acting. You know, some actors just act for, for life, you know? Yeah. Uh, so I got into it back then, back in high school. And uh, as I went to college, I went away for school. I missed the Bronx. I missed community. So when I came back into community, I was like, there's so much richness here. So that's what got me into more documentary style filmmaking, where I'm like, I could just spotlight people in my area. What are some of those spotlights that you've done, whether big or small or personal or professional? Uh, For sure. So two, I've done three that kind of like popped off a little bit. Uh. <laughs> I, uh, I started a platform called Directed by Us, where I feature uh, either entrepreneurs or artists in the Bronx, so starting in the Bronx. Uh, so I did one film that got into uh, some film festivals, specifically the Imagine This Woman's Film Festival a couple of years back. And it featured Marian Mejia, who is a uh, natural hair product uh, entrepreneur. Uh, her product line is Pink Root Products, and I had been friends with her for years, so I decided, let me just document you, your process, and, and what you like to do, because we were both, like, transitioning into having natural hair and things like that, so I was like, let me follow your journey, so I did that, and I spotlighted a couple of other people, Christian Montero, he's an artist and, and also in the Bronx who does flower installations, uh, and that kind of, like, went somewhere on Instagram, and I just kept doing it, and I'm still doing it, um, mostly for small businesses. So you said, you know, you started with your friend that you've known for a while, but how do you usually find a subject or a person that you want to do, you know, work that you want to work with? Sometimes they find me or I, I just build that relationship um, for a really long time. And I think to myself, oh, this person will be good for this platform. Uh, and now that I'm getting more into it, more refined into it, I actually work with summer youth employment kids. So I'm working with it within the community so that they can find who's important to them and we can feature them in that platform. And the platform is called Directed by Us. What has been like a really standout moment of working with these young kids? you know, either through your your job or summer youth employment work that you're doing, like what has been a really standout moment for you working with young black and brown children um, when it comes to film? It's so much, like where do I start? The first two things I'm gonna say, the first thing is the the technological, like the media literacy, mm-hmm. the, their ability to just take something, chop and screw it and, and push it out. Um, and that's, you know, because of social media and because a lot of them are digital natives, they grew up with a phone in their hand. Uh, or a screen in their face so they their ability to do that just wows me because I I felt like I was like that when I was young I felt like I was ahead of my time but these kids are showing me things and I'm just like wow you're like 
the trends that are coming up and the ideas that they come up with always wow me. And also like the, the awakeness, the wokeness of them, because, you know, you have the information in your hands for, for that long. Um, they, they come up with just things that are ahead of, ahead of my time. So like their ideas on, on social standings, like they, they just don't put up with a lot of things in the way that we did. And, you know, you expect that with every generation that comes. So they might not put up with like, yeah, but you know, Jesse, they're like a bulldozer. Yeah. And yeah. I welcome it. I welcome, I totally love it. I'm raising one. They're chaotic, you know, but I love it. I truly, truly love it. It's the main character energy for me. like And how much they teach you, you know? And I also think that young people have a really great way of seeing you, um, you know? And I think that's such a beautiful thing that um, sometimes you'd be like, damn, that's what you think I'm like? And then you'd be like, oh shit, that is what I'm like. So they, you know, they, they'll call you in. Um, but sometimes they also cheat, teach you so much, which is, sounds very cliche, but that's very, very true. Very unfiltered, very unfiltered. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Have you felt supported by your family and community when it comes to creating art and creating art as a way of um, making an income? Uh, I would say yes and no. And my parents would take me to like, museums. They would take me to uh, arts programs in the summer on the weekends and, you know, enroll me in that. Uh, and I got inspired to do that. And they never held me back from that. They were always supportive, supportive of my dreams. So I would... I went to school for it, went to university for it, but the the lack of support happened after because you kind of expect like no matter what you graduate and you're gonna get a job in that or somewhere or, you know immediately yeah. and I, I I struggled right after college. I had no mentorship. I didn't know what a mentor was. Like I was just like thrown out there, no guidance. So I was working a lot of jobs unrelated to filmmaking while still building my portfolio and building everything on the side. When you Think about yourself in the future or even tomorrow, right? What is like the dream film that you would want to make? Oh man, part of me wants to say this and part of me doesn't want to say it. I'm going to say it, but you can edit this out if you want. Um, <laughs> I, I'm actually making a documentary um, for the next 10 years, documenting myself. Yes. Uh, yeah, as, as a woman in her 30s because apparently we turn invisible to oh media. yeah we, we become invisible to media and uh, also as a woman of color there's an additional layer of invisibility with women in the media um and I want to document that coming of age thing like I had just gotten out of a relationship right off my 30s it was like a long-term relationship and I'm sure a lot of people can relate to like coming of age <laughs> Yeah. In, in your 30s in a different way so I want to see how what that decision how that emerged myself within the next 10 years so that's that's yeah. what I'm doing Leomani said I am my own muse bitch I am my best muse and good things sometimes take time you know I feel like especially when it comes to just life in general we feel like it needs to be like instant I also have to remind myself that Solange started um, a seat at the table during her Saturn return and it came out when she was like 30 31 and so your Saturn return starts around 27 years old, 30, 31. That's three to four years, right? Yeah. Good things take time. Even with so, uh, Beyonce's Renaissance album, there was a song on there that um, this person, this producer and her were working on for like six years or some shit, right? And like, I don't know about you, but I don't know what Beyonce did to me. I'm still listening to that shit. Like it's, it was, it just came out. All right. So I don't know what type of magic she put on it, but I, well, you know what? I guess I didn't know what magic she put on it. She put magic of like intentionality, and good things take time sometimes. And that's like, okay. And so I kind of feel like that's what your, this 10 year documentary progress is, is, is kind of saying to me. Oh yeah, good, th good things definitely take time. Even when you're cooking too, slow and low. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Ooh, cooking, you like to cook. I love to cook. Tell me a little bit about what you enjoy cooking the most. Oh man, so I've been in like, I've been grateful because my in my job, I'm able to travel now. Like my job takes me to different places in the world. And that's something that I always wanted to do just individually. But the fact that my my career allows that has been amazing. Um, so but when I couldn't travel the way that I do now, um, I like to I, I grew up with PBS, you know, public access. Yes. 
And I, you know, I'm trying to be very for Contessa. Everybody thinks I want to be a, a filmmaker the rest of my life. No, I'm trying to be Ina Garten, bear for Contessa yeah. with her mom's Jerry on the side, you know, cooking slow and low. So um, I, I kind of have a lot of skills from being young to cook. So my favorite things are always slow and low things and like local like things. So I'm, I'm into like the Philippines right now. So I've been okay. making, making a lot of pork adobo, chicken adobo with some rice. Slow and low, you know, you got to get the Dutch oven warmed up. So that's that's me right there. Okay. I love how you said local and you said the Philippines. <laughs> that's local, my favorite. <laughs> the Philippines. I love that. That's awesome. Yeah. When you think of little Leo Mari, how do you think she would feel about filmmaker, traveling the world, you know, helping young people in her community make and tell their stories? How do you think she would like? feel about you or who she oh about you all yeah I think she'd be proud of me I think I think about that often actually and I think that's the thing that drives me to do to make certain decisions mm. uh, to make every decision I think about little me and how like I kind of would protect her and to protect my innocence um so that that's that's really what what informs a lot of my decisions she'd be proud of me what advice do you give to you know young um people who who are interested in the arts and just don't know where to start uh I would say find like at least three mentors and surround yourself with people that are doing what you want to do um I know it's easy to be intimidated because you're not there yet um but it's it's also approach everything with curiosity mm -hmm. um because that'll let you know if you're going the right way you know that's that's my advice I have a follow-up question to that question how do you find a mentor? You know, I often hear people say or tell young people to find a mentor, to find a mentor. And, you know, some people, I mean, there have been articles where it's like, I don't have time to be a mentor. I'm doing my own thing, right? Or like, you have to pay to get a mentor. And something about paying to get a mentor just kind of don't sit right with me. Um, you know, so I'm wondering to d delve a little bit deeper into find a men you know, finding mentors. How do you find one, let alone a team of them? I got you right now. So your mentors should be busy. You know, not busy like capitalism busy, but busy because they like they like doing what they're doing and they're probably doing a bunch of different things. So uh, I, the first thing I, I like to approach it with is be curious. People like to talk about themselves and what they're doing if they're engaged in their own lives. Um, be helpful. Be helpful to them. If I'm a photographer, which I am, a lot of people come up to me and they're like, oh, can I shadow you during a shoot? If you need production assistance, let me know. That's another way to, to you know, get in that mentor's orbit and absorb some of the things that, that they're doing. And you can find mentors for different things. Let's say you want to be a filmmaker, but you see somebody that like has a condo and you're like, yo, I want a condo or something. Make friends with people. They don't have to be your mentors, but you know, you could do like uh, you can make friendships with people that are in places that you want to be so that you could get curious and maybe support them in different ways. Add value to people's lives by adding value to your own. Um, because then that just, it cycles in curiosity on both sides. So yeah, th those are the different ways. Be helpful um, and be curious uh, and add value. I love that. When you think about yourself as a black Dominican woman um what does that like bring up for you Whew. It, it it makes me think of like what I missed out on culturally because I was raised here in the U.S. and I didn't spend too much time in DR um I wish I did but I from the friends that I speak with that they grow up in DR it's like it's harder for women in DR, women of color to, you know, pop out in their careers or pop out in general. It's very tr traditional over there, but I still feel those effects over here in the US. Like I still feel that invisibility as a woman of color, Dominican woman of color uh, in the US. So it's kind of like, how different is it? How, you know, I, I always get curious about the difference and the, the, the impact and like how we can do better and not just over there, but over here. So like, Sometimes I get delusional too. Like I can see externally how it's challenging uh, for people to be, you know, a woman of color in spaces that you don't usually occupy. But I be I was in college, the only woman of color in most of my classes. Straight up delusional and not even feeling the impact until like years later I would look back and I'm like, yeah, I was really the only girl in those classes that's crazy but I would get the most opportunities too which was even crazier because I, I don't know maybe it was just the delusion in me 
at the time that people would just be like, that one stands out. Let me, let's put her in an internship. So when you say delusion, what do you like? That can mean many different things. Can you kind of explain a little bit of like when you say delusion, what you mean? Uh, people try to tell you who you are and you just don't believe it. And I was fortunate enough to have that mental strength from a very young age, that mental resilience to be like, I don't believe you calling me dumb because look at these grades. Or I don't believe you calling me this because I'm still sitting in this room. Like, what are you talking about? So it was that that delusion, but it was actually reality. Yeah. That, that's that's what I mean by it. I hope I clarify. No, 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 that makes sense. That that definitely makes sense. I feel like I absolutely moved through the world with a lot of that in my like early 20s. You know, my Saturn return sat my ass all the way down. But in my early 20s, as I looking back now, I'm like, well, how, you know, people will always ask, like, how did you do that? How did you accomplish that? And I was like, well, I didn't know nothing else but to do that or to do what I wanted to do. And sometimes, yes, I went with it with like, I'm going to accomplish this thing. And sometimes it was just like, I'm going to do this because why not? You know, like th there was no reason to not do it while other people may try to give me a reason as to why I can't or shouldn't, you know, or whatever. Like I didn't really listen to that shit. So I'm trying to find my way back. Find my way back to I'm not going to lie to you. I'm there too. Yeah. I'm there too. Like I sometimes let people be like telling me who I am and I'm like, oof. I, I got to remember who I am in, in every situation. It gets harder when you get older, I feel. Yeah, I feel like it gets harder. And then I also heard it gets easier. And I'm like, I don't know who's telling the truth, but I hope <laughs> it's getting easier because I just, you know, ease is a wonderful thing. Um, yeah. I would like to move through life with ease. Um, like a warrior, but with ease, you know? Protected covers. Yeah. Where can people find you, your films, your work online? Where can they find you, follow you, and support all these, you know, these things that keep popping off, as you just like casually said? Yeah, for sure. So uh, on the internet, um, directed by Leo on Instagram, on TikTok, that's my handle. Uh, for my website, it's directedbyleo.com. You can look at my work if you're interested in booking me for video or photo production. I'm there um and yeah my email's there info at directedbyleo.com happy to chat wonderful and I look forward to all of the things that you're doing as well as this 40 year old film or a collection of work that will come out and you know see how you've grown and how you've changed and how you found ways to continue to be your own best muse so I really appreciate you taking time to chat with me today um and shout out to young people everywhere for sure thank you for having me i'm looking forward to the series